Okay, it's time to replace tables with tables. So in this session, we'll be uh, discussing how to access database using Ballerina. So there are actually two ways to do this. You can use the persistence module, or you can just use the plain old clients. So in the case of persistence module, uh, it is a, a solution similar to Hibernate or any other ORN model. So in this case, Ballerina has its own solution. And when it comes to clients, it's just plain clients that can connect to different databases. In this particular session, we'll be discussing about clients because that is more relevant when it comes to integration. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is start the database. To start the database, I'm going to use the Docker. I'm just going to use the Docker Compass ML file, which is there in the GitHub repository. So if you don't have Docker, that's fine. Then you have to install your own MySQL uh, server. So in this case, uh, we are going to use MySQL. So we need that. Right, so if I go to my Docker Compass YAML file, uh, you can see there are a bunch of other services. We don't need those things for the moment. So let's comment it. Right, so if you look at here, you can see uh, the Docker image I'm using is this one. And I'm using the default ports. And here you can see a bunch of other configurations like the user, this password, database, that kind of thing. And this is the important thing. So there is this SQL script, which you need to execute uh, in your database. So if you're not using uh, this database, and you are using your own one, then you have to make sure you execute this uh, script, which actually contains the tables and the relevant values. Okay, so let's go back to our terminal and let's just start our SQL server. So once started, you can use uh, some SQL client like MySQL SH to connect to the database and see the tables. So here you can see there are three tables and these tables are populated with relevant values. Okay, so our database is ready. So we can start writing code. So let's put our ballerina file. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this ballerina table with the database table. So, so since I'm using MySQL, I need a MySQL client. I'll say social media db and then new I need to initialize this just to save time I'll just uh, copy the values right so I get a red line because when you initialize the database client what you actually get is the union type of client or error I don't want to handle this error here, so I'll just propagate the error using the check ex expression. So, uh, so now what happens is that if there's an error, module init will handle that. Right, so we have our database client, so let's use that to access the database. So there are several query actions we can use, so I'm just going to use query and say select star from users. So this will actually return a stream of users. So while returning the stream of users, there is a possibility of getting an SQL error. So it is mentioned here. Right, so from this stream, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an array of users. To do that, uh, I can say query for user in query 
this. So here I'll just say user stream and there's this. So what I'm doing is I'm using ballerina query expression to get the user array from the user stream. So that is what I'm doing. So here, uh, if you are not familiar with ballerina query expression, it is somewhat similar to SQL queries. So you can learn more about it in, in the learn page of ballerina.io, right? So this resource is ready. So let's write this resource as well. I'll just comment this for now. And again, let's use our database client. Let's say query row. So this time I just only want one query, one row actually. So I'm going to use query row instead of query because of that. So let's write the query we want to execute. From users where ID equals dollar ID. So that is what we want to execute. So this will actually return user or scale right so here if you're not familiar with this tactic syntax we call this a raw template you need to use raw template when you are passing uh, uh, variables to your query when you do so our SQL clients will automatically do the security check so that you don't have to worry about SQL injections or anything like that. Right, so this time I just want to handle the error because I want to see if this is a meaningful name here. If user is, I just want to check a specific error, no rules error. That means this user is not a valid user. So then we can just, uh, yes, we can just do this. Otherwise, we can just return user. Right, we don't own this now. Let's just get rid of that. So if I just explain this one more time, I use query row and then I I got user or SQL error union type here. And then I just check for a particular SQL error, which is SQL no loss error. If that is the case, I'm just going to send user not found because it is not a valid user. Otherwise, I'll just return the use. Right, for the last one, I'm just going to copy it from the GitHub repository just to save time. So let me quickly go to the repository and copy it from there. Right. Okay, so that looks good as well. So here I'm using execute instead of query row because this time I just want to insert a value. So this is just basic SQL query. So I'm going to go into details and then I'm just returning HTTP create. So in this case, I'm not interested in the return value. So I'm just ignoring that. Right, so all good. Let's start this service. And if we go to this file, let's give it a moment. Okay, our service is started, so let's, okay, I got an error. Okay, this is because even though I um, added the client, I didn't add the relevant uh, drive. So let's add that driver as well. For MySQL, we have a driver. So let's add that as underscore. Right, so what this means is uh, I'm just importing the driver and I'm not going to use it in our code. So 
So what happens is that uh, when I build the program, it will include the driver into the final artifact. Okay, let's start the program now. I hope it works this time. So let's open this file. Okay, this time it works. So let's send the request and see for users. Okay, so it fails because here you can see my record is something like this, but if you go here and check the table, table for users is different. So it has underscore, underscore mobile name. So what we need to do is, uh, we just need to do the mapping. So let's use annotation for that. And then we can say column, column name. So for this, I just want to map birthdays. There's this additional thing, but so let's get rid of that. And similarly, for this, I just need to let's get it from the database. How about now? Right. So, okay. Okay, so let's start the service again. Okay, I hope this time it actually works. So in the meantime, let's open this file. Okay, it seems it's working this time. So let's send a request and see. This is the file. So let's try to get all the users in the database. Okay, so this time we get the expected response. You can see there are a bunch of uh, users. Now, let's try to get a specific user. Right, that also work, works. So let's get another user. Yes, that also works. So now let's try to add a new user. So let's add this user to the database. Okay, send the request. Okay, I got 201 created. So let's get all the users. And let's check whether the new user is there. Yes, you can see as the last value, we have the new user. Okay, so that's all I want to discuss in this session. See you in the next one.